This crate just arrived for me with freight delivery and kudos to the driver, he did a great job. And we're gonna tear this open and check out the new batteries. Inside this crate is a battery that came out of an electric BMW. Now these BMWs were in service between 2012, 2015, and then the batteries were taken back and inspected by BMW. Uh, then they sat in storage for a while and then sold on the secondary market. That's where Battery Hookup was able to get a bunch of these. This whole crate weighs about 1,300 pounds. Now it was delivered using a lift gate freight delivery service. Uh, so freight on these things costs $450. If you're close to Pennsylvania, you can pick it up yourself. These are from Battery Hookup, uh, batteryhookup.com. There's a link down in the description below. Uh, they sell for $2,700, but you can get 10% off of that if you use my coupon code, which is David Paz. Now, full disclosure, Battery Hookup did send me this battery. All right, so height on this thing, off the ground, we're looking at 26 inches, width, 45 inches, and total length is 78 inches. So that's how big it is. If you can fit it, great. You can go pick it up in Pennsylvania or you can pay the $450 and get delivery. Let's tear it open. Here we go. Here's one of the tabs holding down the lid and I'm just gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and I think this is how we can get into it. There we go. Okay, I think I got all the latches off. Let's pull the lid. There's always one more. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, we got some batteries in here. Woo! I just pulled that lid off and now we get the big reveal. All the batteries inside. Woo! Look at them. Man, so it looks like they come in three modules. Got some kind of inspection thing there. So we got a couple different packs and then one really long one. Oh, Germany, okay. Got some lithium ion on here. So this is probably an inspection date from 2015. Whoa, maximum single cell difference. 10 millivolts, not bad. Going on, got a big powerful connection there. Oh, it looks like the batteries are bolted to the crate. Got some kind of grounding strap. Wow, they look great. <laughs> I'll bet this is some kind of vent for pressure relief maybe. Big grounding straps. One step down, more steps to go. All right, let's see what bolts these are. <laughs> With the sides of the case off, we can get a better look. Well, that's great. To get this bolt off, I don't need a wrench underneath. It looks like they have this neat little washer with a couple of screws on there. So I should be able to just back this out from above, which is awesome. The first bolt on here is a 14 millimeter. I might need to recharge my battery, but here's the bolt. Last month I built this work table and I have just wheeled it over to the crate. Hopefully I can angle this first battery up and get it on here so it's a more comfortable working height to take it apart. Now for taking apart this big module, I don't have any instructions to go off of. So I'm going to start by taking off these nuts so that hopefully whatever mechanism is secured from underneath gets released. Then I can come over and take these Torx bits out. And if I take those out, then hopefully this lid will come up and off. Now I've taken apart a couple of other types of EV batteries. Usually there's no voltage up here 
because there's relays built inside the case and the relays don't get closed or basically turned on until the computer in the car says it's okay. So let's double check that. I don't know if that's going to be the case here, but we'll try. Yeah, so I don't have any voltage present. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, it lifted up. Let's double check these pins. Man, these look pretty, don't they? Nice. All right, so these thin little wires are for data connections and it looks like they're held to the lid using some more Torx screws. So let's go ahead and take those off. <laughs> and BMW used a different size. Okay, so these Torx were 25, the sides were 20, and it looks like these ones are 15. <laughs> All right, we are free. At this point, I've pulled all these little data wires. Now these are sensing the voltage of every individual cell. So there's gonna be individual cells down there and then they communicate back to these computer modules, which all go into this larger computer, which then sends signal uh, into this module. So I assume inside here is going to be the relays. So that means that this is going to be like a main positive and a main negative, but I don't know if they're positive or negative. But these are the main two posts. Then we're going to have relays, and then that's why we don't see any voltage out here. So I'm pushing in a latch, and now I should be able to slide this out. From underneath oh and it's caught over here it's zip tied on Snips. there we go so there's the high voltage so that's very cool how BMW did that there's still a plastic cover in place over that high voltage post and I was able to pull out this that's really cool So I'm pressing in a little lever, and then I should be able to slide this off to the side, just like that. Computer module's in the way of getting it all the way off. How did those guys at BMW do this? <laughs> there we go. Great. So now we have this... Uh, so inside there is probably a spade. This is the female side and on the battery itself it's going to be a spade terminal. In there. What have we got? 110. 110 volts. I should be able to take this piece of metal off which is like a metal lid covering all the cells and on it are all of these computer modules. So I'm just going to leave the computer modules and the relays attached and we'll just lift everything up and off as one. Hopefully that works. There might be some hidden fasteners or something that I'll find out and have to take these off anyways, but let's try it first. Leave it to them for one hidden nut underneath that relay module. <laughs> there we go. All the cell modules. <laughs> oh, that looks nice. All right, so since this is still high voltage at 110 volts, I'm gonna put my gloves back on and start taking off these cables, starting with this one, which will immediately have it so that we'll only have 55 volts and then I can continue.
Whoa, that works. Wasn't sure how I was gonna get them out. <laughs> We've now pulled out the modules from this case and inside is this really cool heat exchanger. So we've got two coolants, one's going to be input, one's output, one or the other, and it just flows down, U-shape over, and then through the other side. And these things are, these things are, you know, thin wall aluminum. They look like they could dent pretty easily just from the installer you know, putting in the bolts or whatever. The entire case is aluminum, and then it's got an aluminum plate, and so this surface needs to make contact with this surface so the coolant will transfer the heat away. And I just can't believe the engineering that went into this. It's crazy. Wow. So in addition to that, it looks like the case has big bumpers around the sides, like that extra steel. Uh, and then the bottom has an additional layer of steel down below it. These are absorption things, probably uh, desiccant material to absorb moisture. Yeah, so really beefy, well-made unit. I mean, I once took apart a Smart for Two car battery and the case was nowhere near as tough and sturdy as this, which is why it got dented. Uh, in my video I showed that, but this is built way tougher than that. After unsnapping this plastic cover, we can remove it and see all these beautiful cell tabs. So it looks like two cells are in parallel, so 2P. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? It looks like 5S, so 2P, 5S. Can somebody confirm, is this a laser weld on there? Like, did they go bzzz with a laser? <laughs> so these modules are beautiful. I've been checking the cell voltages, and they're all beautiful, well-balanced. Uh, they're all sitting around 3.95 volts. So after I looked at this, and I realized that this is a 2P5S, 2P4S, and 2P5S strung together, this is 14S. So it's a perfect 48-volt system. Just like this battery that I built over here, this is 14S, perfect 48 volt. This one here is also a 14S, 48 volt. So if I did this again, I wouldn't even pull the modules out of this steel case. I would leave them bolted right in. And in fact, I am going to put these back into the case. Uh, and I'm probably going to cut off these little arms that stick out, make it a little bit more compact, put them back in there. I'm going to put two BMSs on here. I'll put a BMS for this string, probably use a 100 amp BMS, another 100 amp BMS over here on this string, and then I will probably use a 40 or 50 amp circuit breaker on this string and a 40 or 50 amp circuit breaker over here on this. It'll, they'll match each other. And that will give me about 100 amps continuous output from this steel box, which would be about roughly 5 kilowatts. And so with a 5 kilowatt output or input, now these cells are capable of much higher amp discharge, but the reason for limiting them to say 50 amps is so that they don't overheat when charging. Uh, I have a big solar array connected to my uh, charge controller, and this charge controller is capable of 100 amps. So if I was to push 100 amps into this, it would get hot. And I don't want to do that because I don't want to hook up active cooling. Uh, so for example, this active cooling tubes in here would normally circulate coolant, but that just adds a layer of complexity that I want to avoid. So if I put a circuit breaker on here for say 50 amps, then they're not going to get warm. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to put in active cooling. It just keeps everything simple. If you decide to do this whole module across, we're looking at just under four feet. This support arm could easily be cut off. 
Uh, so if you bought yourself a four foot wide shelf that was capable of handling the weight of this, then this could fit onto that four foot wide shelf. And I'm going to cut these off. So we're looking at roughly 20 inches that the support arm sticks out. But if I cut it off, I can get it down to maybe 16 and a half inches uh, just to this just to this point. After I make my series connection using the original uh, orange wire, I have a couple of these Anderson power pole. Now, I think these are 120 amps continuous rating. So I'll have these come out of the metal case and I think that will make for a really nice easy way to connect up an eight kilowatt hour battery or better. I mean, I'll have to, I'll, I'll do my own capacity test to double check that. And that will be coming up in some future videos. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to tell you what the plan was is to get the video out uh, to you as soon as possible uh, because sometimes I've made a video and by the time I get the video out about a battery, battery hookup has already sold out of them. And I wanted to make sure I could get this out before they sell out <laughs> so that you guys uh, have the opportunity to buy them. Uh, I have spoken with battery hookup. I asked them if they'd be willing to sell the one module separate from the other two that came in the giant crate. And they agreed to that, which is fantastic. So for the viewers of this channel, if you do want to make your own uh, 48 volt pack, but the freight shipping is a fixed price, uh, I'm not really sure why shipping is like that, but it is. So if you want to buy one module, it'll be $850 plus $350 shipping. If you buy two, then it'll be $1,700 for the modules still $350 for the shipping or on up. So the more you buy, the more the shipping cost gets diluted to the uh, modules, making them even cheaper. And if you use the coupon code David Paws, you'll get 10% off the cost of the modules, not the shipping, but the modules. And I think that's really exciting and probably the best way to go about it. So in some future videos, I'll be adding BMSs and putting these back into the case. Uh, I, I mean, I think this is gonna be a really easy way to make a big power wall, especially if you get uh, like industrial shelving and you stack them like four tall <laughs> and make yourself a really big pack. I will have to uh, jump online and order a couple of BMSs for this. I'll have to do the capacity test for myself after it's all put back together. Uh, but just to repeat, uh, Battery Hookup did share the test results with me when they tested the cells and they got 87%. Uh, so, hey, thank you everybody very much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.